Well, good morning, family, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord again this morning on the Sabbath morning, isn't it? If I didn't know where everyone was, I thought my popularity had dropped, but it's good to see the faithful saints are still here this morning, and we wish our children all the best of uh, fun and God's blessing as they, as they meet together. Quite often I get asked the question, how can we help in outreach within the church? And, uh, and I'd just like to, to announce that from the board we've actually agreed on that if you'd like to support our evangelistic satellite ministry, uh, please send your donations towards Lewis. We've, uh, uh, you know, we've organised a man to be in charge of this, um, uh, Mr Terry Adams, who's uh, very faithful towards the church. But on the same token, I'd like to say thank you for, to Lewis because he's done a fantastic job in setting up our satellite ministry here in Wangarei. And, uh, you know, people can actually receive the Hope Channel 3ABM in, in the privacy of their own home. And so that's a ministry that's, that's developing, and we just like to support it here at Wangarei, so that if you feel a burden to support a ministry, uh, please uh, see Lewis. Right. <clears throat> My story this morning involves two men. These two men, you'll know once I, once I get into my story, but these two men are, uh, are good friends. And they became very good friends during the time that Jesus was upon earth. They spent three years in his ministry and were called to the ministry to be his disciples. One of them in particular we know is a, is a bit of an outspoken, but a strong fisherman. And uh, so you know who I'm talking about here, that's Peter. But the last time we heard about these two men, in the story before Jesus went to heaven was when they had an early morning race. They had a race to the tomb. Peter set off beforehand and then the other disciple, as he's known, overtook him and got to the, to the tomb first. So that was the last story as recorded in the book of John in chapter 20. But I'd like now to go to the book of Acts chapter 3. And these two men are mentioned once again. Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 1. And it says here, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Peter and John, friends since Jesus called them to be his disciples. This is the same Peter and the same John that took part in that early morning race to the tomb on Resurrection Sunday. Together today, in our recording here, in chapter, in verse 1, it says, Peter and John went up into, together into the temple at the ninth hour, sorry, at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, commentators and other translations referred to and have suggested that this be 3 p.m. in the afternoon. For us, this may seem a strange time, 3 p.m., in the afternoon. Verse 2 goes on to comment, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So here in verse 2 it states that this man was lame from birth, from his mother's womb. And daily he was taken to the temple and laid at the gate, the gate of the temple. Even the name of the gate in this verse is mentioned, the name of this particular gate being beautiful. Interesting and yet an historical road marker for all of us. A road marker to give us evidence that this event did take place and yet there is a gate by the temple called beautiful. Beautiful because of its ornate designs. Our commentator, notes that the engraved, engraved uh, images around the gates were big bunches of grapes overlaid with gold. Whether they depicted the big grapes that, they, that the spies uh, brought back from uh, when they um, investigated the promised land, we do not know. But as one entered the gate at three in the afternoon, the sun shone on the grapes and other ornate graven images which looked absolutely beautiful, hence the name Beautiful. And as the lame man, lame man lay at the temple gate, he begged. Our Bible tells us he begged for arms. Going on to verse 3, it says, Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked 
them also for alms. So on this particular day, we have Peter and John about to enter the temple, and he asked them for money or alms, as mentioned in our Bibles. But here is where it really gets interesting. Here we have Peter in verse 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Can you imagine Peter with his, with his, his, his strong um, frame and, uh, and that powerful voice? And he says, Look at us. Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John at his side, said, Look on us. In other words, staring at him to have his attention and with a commanding voice says, look at us. You could just imagine what this poor man, this poor lame man is thinking. And it says in verse 5 that he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Peter then goes on to say in verse 6, he says, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give thee in the name of Jesus of Christ. The name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. He has nothing in his hands, but such as I give thee, he says. The poor man will be wondering again, what on earth is Peter talking about? Surely the lame man is confused as he searches the expression on Peter and John's faces. Then says Peter, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. It's interesting to note too as our story goes on that Peter did not wait for a, a response. No, Peter does not wait for a, a response from the lame man. He simply takes him by his strong right hand and lifts him up. Verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankles, ankle bones received strength. Immediately, his feet and ankle bones receive strength. This lame man is no longer lame, praise the Lord. He doesn't hobble around. Instead, he leaps up and stands. Then he walks and enters into the temple, leaping for joy and praising God. Can we imagine the scene today? This once lame man of many years is leaping and walking around, and the joy on Peter's face is, let alone the lame man's face, must have been immense. Yes, a real miracle, one of many recorded here in the scriptures. A miracle mentioned yet tucked in a, in a small few verses that we could miss if we didn't study scripture and instead read through it as a, as a history book. But when we study it, we find this wonderful little miracle just tucked in here into the book of Acts. God's word is powerful. It heals people because it has, has been given to us by his Holy Spirit. And God's word is holy. You know, as we reflect on these eight verses, it would be interesting to hear what each of us took out as points of interest for ourselves personally. Would it be for some of us maybe the friendship between Peter and John? Or for others, would it be the lame man? How old was he? How did he lay? Did he lay on the laid, hewn paving stones or on a mat? How was he dressed? Or maybe it's the architecture of the gate and the temple and all its beauty that we think about. The healing of this lame man and the joy that surrounded him as people recognised him as the man whom lay by the gate beautiful. It's amazing that we can take out of these eight verses Sorry, it's amazing what we can take out of these eight verses. But I re what I really want to dwell on this morning is the intent of Peter and John at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. At the hour of prayer being the ninth hour, three in the afternoon, this was their custom. This was their daily activity every day to go to the temple at the hour of prayer. At the hour of prayer, this was their custom to go to the temple again at three in the afternoon. Brother and sister, it is time for us to go to the temple. It is the hour of prayer. It is time for us too to also be healed of our lameness. <clears throat> Next Wednesday at 7 p.m., we are coming together again at the church to re recommence our midweek prayer meeting. It is time again to pray. 
It is time to be healed and to prepare ourselves for the coming of our Lord and his outpouring of his Holy Spirit. That is our first step as a church, to come together and organise a midweek meeting. The next step is yours also. The first step is support the church, the prayer group, of course, but the next step is really yours. Daily we go to the temple to pray. You choose the hour, but start praying. You go to the temple and start praying. But the church is not, not always open for us to do this. No excuse. The temple, yes, the temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Take yourself into the closet, into a room, and start praying. In Colossians 4, 2, we have um, advice on how we should be conducting ourselves. It says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Again, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. In 1 Peter 3.12, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Philippians 4.6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Verse 7, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. We need our hearts and our minds to be guarded for the work of Jesus Christ. So much has been thrown at us out there, brothers and sisters. We need to spend time in prayer so that we know what the will of Jesus Christ is for each and every one of us. Romans 10 verse 1 says, Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. We are spiritual Israel. That's my desire for all, each and every one of you that you will be saved. Mark, Matthew 21, verse 13. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. He was referring to those before he cleansed the temple, but today this house is also to be called a house of prayer. Penned from the spirit of prophecy, Mrs. White write, writes, the consistent course is to commit our, our desires to all our all-wise Heavenly Father and then in perfect confidence trust all to him. We know that God hears us if we ask according to his will, but to press our petitions without a submissive spirit is not right. Our prayers must take the form, not of command, but of intercession. Ministry of Healing, page 230, uh, uh, paragraph 2. Intercessory prayer, what a privilege. Three years ago, sorry, three years ago. No, it wasn't. It was only three weeks ago. We saw it firsthand as we all came together to petition to our Lord for the life of our sister Cecile, and he answered our prayer that she's with us today. Amen. Intercessory prayer. If we all come together in unity, there is such a power, folks, that, uh, that God hears us. And what a wonderful what a, what a wonderful army we are if we all come together in prayer. We united ourselves into intercessory, into intercessory prayer and he answered us. The God of heaven wants us to talk to him and intercede with him on behalf of others. We have our true warriors, our true prayer warriors in the church today and they do a fantastic job. And I thank you also to those warriors for the prayers that you offer for Marianne and I in, in the ministry that we're doing. A special thank you to you all. Some of you have a beautiful relationship with our Lord because you spend time in prayer. You know who your Saviour is. It is all great, and you have your own way of talking with your Lord, and that's, that's very special. We have on the back of our bulletin our prayer list, and that is great too. But when we look at that list, we can really call it our sick list. But that's okay too. So what am I saying? It's time to take our prayer life to the next level. Remembering that some of you may have already taken it to the next level, and that's okay too, that's great. After we set aside the prayer for the family and the sick, let's stay on our knees a little bit longer and go that little bit further. Intercessory prayer. Can you imagine what can happen here in the church and in the city of Wangarei 
if we all prayed in unity as we did for Cecil? Why should we be happy with one miracle when we can have a miracle every day of the week? John 16, verse 23 and 24. We just turn to the book of John. <clears throat> John 16, reading from verse 23 and 24. And it says, In that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you are, shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. 24, hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Full is the, is the word, sorry. So that your joy may be full. Brothers and sisters, it is my wish that your joy will be full. It is my wish that my joy will be full also. We can be really joyful Seventh-day Adventist Christians, positive knowing that as we talk and petition our Lord, we are building not only a relationship with him, but that he is answering our prayers. You know, and this relationship that we start today with our Lord Jesus Christ is not going to end today. It's going to go on for eternity. Amen? Praise the Lord. Joy is seeing a person who is lost except Jesus Christ. That is a joy that has got no boundaries. Joy is working hand in hand with our Lord. Joy is interceding on behalf of others to our Lord. You know, there are members even who that pray, but they don't pray in the name of Jesus. And Jesus says here explicitly that if you ask the Father anything in my name, I will give it to you. But then we say, yeah, but I've done that. And I didn't get an answer. Well, maybe the answer you got was no. Keep on praying. Because if we do everything in accordance to the will of God, he is faithful. And for, in, in order for that to happen, we also have to have faith and claim this promise of Jesus, and do not forget to say thank you. Yes, we've prayed many a prayer that we may not have necessarily seen the answer straight away, but then it's come. And as Jim mentioned this morning, sometimes we haven't prayed for something and it's happened anyway. The Lord knows exactly what, what we want. He wants us to ask him. And what a joyful um, answer we had this morning from James. James has had an answer to his prayer, and he's allowed to stay and work in New Zealand. Praise the Lord. You know, what a stress that, that, that's been on that man, and it's been taken away because the Lord has answered prayer. And again, on behalf of James, I'm sure I can thank you all for the prayers that have ascended on his behalf. But keep on praying. Keep on praying. How many of you have friends, family, workmates, school friends, travel companions, neighbours that have not yet accepted Jesus as their personal saviour. I have. I have family that are not with us today. We have family in Switzerland that are not in the church today, but we want them to be in heaven with us, so we're going to put them on our list if they're not already on your list. Radical prayer is what we have to start praying now. Have you ever thought of placing people on your radical prayer list? Those guys that work at you, work with you, and maybe abuse you because of the stand that you make for Jesus Christ. Have you thought that they too should be here with us today? Put them on your prayer list. Out of the people you know, take five names and place them on your radical prayer list. And whenever you want to make a day of the week or a time of the day, pray for these five people. That they too will come to accept, accept Jesus as their personal saviour. Pastor Dwight Nelson tells the similar story of a man who did this. He wrote five names on his list and regularly prayed for those souls on his list. In the period of the next 25 years, four of these people gave their lives to Jesus. Amen. The last one, the fifth one, gave his life to Jesus when that man had already passed away. It's never too late. It was because of the testimony in the sermon at that man's funeral that that man accepted Jesus Christ. Five people. Can you imagine if a, the members of this church all prayed for five people on his list, we would have 700 people attending our church. 140 members we've got registered. If five of them brought those people on their list of church, we'd have 700 people here. 
Are we going to make a list? A radical prayer list? Because they need to have the opportunity to go to heaven also. The power of prayer is powerful. Dwight also says he got an email from a young man who attended a young person seminar, an AYC seminar in Sydney, Australia. After he suggested that they ought to place five names also on a list, that very same night he received an email and it said, Praise the Lord, it works. Two of my friends whose names are on my list gave their life to Jesus tonight at our revival seminar. It works. Just five names. Start with five anyway, and then if you want to increase it, that's up to you. But give those people, five, uh, five, those five people the opportunity to allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives. In Luke chapter 10, verse 2, it also says, Therefore said one unto them, his disciples, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth into his harvest laborers. Verse 3, Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lamb among the wolves. The laborers are here, but they're not laboring. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into his harvest. Lord, here I am, send me, should it be our prayer. We've got the five names of those whom we know on our list. We are now laboring. God knows who is out there. God knows whom is out there. He knows who he has called. And all you have to do is pray and ask him to bring those people into your lives. How many of you this week went to the supermarket, to the bank, shopping in general, hospital, to work? Lord, I want to labour for you. Give me, send me these people one by one, please, Lord, so that I can labour for you. As lambs, he sends us forth. Yes, Lord, I am a lamb too. I am weak to work for you. And besides, there are wolves out there waiting to attack me. Little Albert heard about the five names. He got excited and he says to his friends, let us go down to the mall and sing songs of praise to Jesus Christ. His friends said, yeah, okay, let's do it. They go down to the local mall in, uh, in the States and they start singing songs. And it was wonderful because as they were singing these songs to God of praise, 30 people gathered around them and started to join in to, uh, to sing songs of praise. Towards the end, little Albert had to go to the, to the bathroom. And as he goes to the bathroom down the road, uh, he's still humming away the songs that he'd been singing of praise. And as he's, as he's in the toilet washing his hands, one of the young teenage adolescents follow him in and says, I reckon it's stupid what you say about loving Jesus. And little Albert turns around and he says, but I do love Jesus and he loves you. Just then, another cubicle opens. And a man as big as my brother Stan walks out with a neck on him like a bull. And he walks up behind the young man who was harassing Albert and he says, I love Jesus too. What a joy that came on Albert's face to know that he was not alone as he was working for Jesus. You know why he was not alone? Because as lambs we go out but the shepherd is with us, we shall not want. I am a lamb but my shepherd never leaves or forsakes me. His staff comforts me and I am not afraid of the wolves. <coughs> Another story, Wilbur grows up in his church and the only prayer he prayed publicly during his 70 years was once in Sabbath school. He then gets a call to go and hold an, an evangelistic outreach program in Kenya, Africa. He goes, no Lord, not me, surely. But as he contemplates this, the Holy Spirit talks to him and he decides to go. He then rings the organisers in Kenya, Africa, and he says, how many people live in this village? They said, uh, about 5,000. He says, what, 5,000? I can't talk to 5,000 people. He did. He said, 5,000 people most probably will be coming to the meetings each night of the week, 10,000 maybe on the weekends. Wilbur went and presented the evangelistic campaign in Kenya. At the end of the campaign, 400 people were baptised into the life, into the body of Jesus Christ and 2,000 are in study for baptism because Wilbur decided to go. 
he was laboring for Jesus Christ. So you can imagine after that experience, Wilbur was walking a meter off the ground because of the joy that he had in bringing these souls to Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we don't have to go to Kenya. We just have to go out the door, out the door and tell others that uh, Jesus loves them. Put those names on the list and start praying. We would not have half the problems if we spent more time in prayer. If we spent more time on our knees asking what the Lord's will is for our, in our lives, we wouldn't have half the problems. How do you want to get to know your Lord if you don't talk to him? Let us turn, turn now to Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. And here we have the council in regards to prayer. And uh, I'll be reading down to verse 15. So reading from Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, it says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter thou into the closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray... Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, of, pray ye our Father, which art in heaven. Our God is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Praise be your name. Thy kingdom come, not our kingdom. Thy kingdom come, and may it come soon. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will has already been done in heaven. We just want it done here on earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus gives us everything we need for our daily lives. His word is the spiritual word, bread of life, and he feeds us because he knows what the sparrows need, so he knows what we need. Forgive us our debts, yeah. We're all sinners. We need forgiveness every day. We need to have that repentance as we forgive those who sinned against us. One of the hardest things to do, but what a blessing to be released from um, by forgiving someone if they've wronged us. Lead us not into temptation. It's not his will that we be led into temptation. His spirit is with us always. His angels are watching over us, but deliver us from evil, from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Very easy manner the Lord has taught us to pray. We all know how to talk to each other. Let's talk to God. Let's put those names on our list and let's move this church forward to prepare for the second coming of Jesus. Five names. Let's labour for Jesus. I want to go home. Do you? Amen. Thank you.
Dearest Heavenly Father, this morning we bring everything to you in prayer, Lord. Father, you know our, our problems, you know our weaknesses, you know what we require, Lord, and we know those people who we're going to put on our prayer list, Lord. Please touch their hearts. May your spirit talk to them, Lord. May they come and fellowship with us as we await the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Please be with our families. Please be with those who are not with us today. But, Lord, we just thank you for the wonderful gift of Jesus Christ. Be with us now as we leave your sanctuary, Lord, as we go uh, through the rest of the Sabbath day. Touch us with your Holy Spirit again and prepare us, Lord, to meet those people uh, Lord, who want to know more about you this week. Bring them into our lives, Lord, so that we can be your labourers and your witnesses and give us the strength, Lord, through your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen.